Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you watched my last video, you know that I'm really passionate about fun cars, fast cars. So today I'm going to share with you 10 great cheap fast cars that are available on the used car market today that you could find for 10 grand or less. Lots of great buys out there. If you want to go fast and you really don't want to have to spend a whole lot of money doing it, you're going to want to stick around and check out the list now. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Mark with Exotic Car Play Place. And so number one on my list happens to be a 2000 to 2006 BMW E46 M3. So what's so special about the E46 M3? Well, let's start with a two-door coupe or a two-door convertible. It had a 3.2 liter straight six engine mated to either an SMG semi-automatic or a six-speed manual gearbox. This car produced 333 horsepower from 3.2 liters of normally aspirated drivetrain. Yes, folks, that's over 100 horsepower per liter. That really means this really was, in fact, a race car for the street. It sounded the part, it drove the part, it handled exceptionally well, and honestly, when that car discontinued in 2006, many, many enthusiasts cried over the fact that the E90 came out was much bigger, heavier, and slightly less agile. The E46 was always a fan favorite amongst the BMW owners out there, and honestly, one of the very best M3s to date. So the second car on my list for really great value cars that cost somewhere between ten dollars to $12,000, of course you can pay more or less, happens to be the E55 Mercedes-Benz AMG car. Now of course these cars had about 354 horsepower and about 391 pound-feet of torque. With that, it could actually almost keep up with the 911 turbo of that era. Zero to 60 times were around 4.8 seconds, quarter mile at about 13.3 seconds as well. So blistering acceleration, it had a whole host of features as well, from active side skirts, 18 inch wheels, AMG sport seats, multifunction computer, auto climate control, Bose premium sound system, and the list goes on. It was loaded, it was packed full of options, and it was blistering in terms of performance. And hey, what's not to like about a 5.5 liter V8? The sound, oh, the sound is so nice as well. So that is the second car on my choice of top 10. So a third choice on my cheap but fast cars goes to actually the SRT4 Neon. Yeah, normally the Neons are kind of pieces of junk throwaway cars, but the SRT4 really brought new life to the brand. SRT for street racing technology really was the department that brought a breathed a new life into the SRT4 or into the Neon. And this car had a 2.4 liter four cylinder engine turbocharged with a five-speed manual transmission. It had larger front and rear sway bars, equal length half shafts, and it also had a high performance, high torque sax performance clutch as well to support the power that this car would put out. So the Neon also had 17 inch wheels. It needed that extra size of wheels to hold the car stable. Now, when you're normally buying an SRT car from Dodge, normally you expect low production numbers and that's usually the case for Vipers and such. But fortunately for you guys, if you want one of these, there was actually about 25,000 models produced in its run, which makes it relatively easy to actually find one of these used cars, hopefully find one in good shape. Now I have to say my fourth recommendation for some of the fastest cars around 10 grand, so making it one of the cheapest, fastest cars available, has to go with the BMW E60 M5. And yes, I know I seem a little biased because I have one myself, it's actually the chicken or the egg syndrome because I bought one because it's one of the fastest cars. Not saying it's one of the fastest because I bought one. You get it? So anyway, the E60 M5 is seriously, seriously fast piece of machinery. The only catch, of course, watch out for rod bearing history, watch out for Vanos problems, SMG pumps, watch out for your throttle actuators, rear differentials that can explode, and there's a pretty good list that goes on and on. Get past those things, or if you've got a good maintenance service history, you can actually find these cars. Now I've seen them for 10 grand, eight, 10, $12,000, believe it or not, that low. Now usually for that price, you're not getting a premium car. You're gonna get one with some miles on it. Be very careful. Again, exercise caution when buying one of these things. Make sure the service is up to date. But with 507 brake horsepower and 380 some odd pound feet of torque, V10 engine that sounds like a Formula One engine when you put an aftermarket exhaust on it, mated to either a six-speed manual or a seven-speed SMG transmission. 
This car, if you chip it, these have been known to hit 204 miles per hour. Spectacularly fast car for the dollar. Just like I said, be careful with the maintenance items. Now the fifth one on my list happens to go to another German brand. This time it's a Porsche. Well, everybody knows right now the 911s are going through the roof. The values are ridiculous, really almost uncalled for in a lot of cases. So getting a hold of a used 911 is becoming more and more difficult for reasonable dollars. So in other words, you usually overpay for a car and a lot of times you're getting a less than perfect car for top dollars. So there's another way to get into a used Porsche. How about a Boxster? And even more so, how about a Boxster S? Now many are gonna argue that it's not a real Porsche, but let me assure you, especially you get the S model, which is the 240 horsepower, you get that with the six speed manual gearbox, and honestly, it'll still do 155 miles per hour. It'll still do zero to 60 in around five seconds. It is a really quick car, lots of fun, still has the brand, and hey, you've got that Porsche keychain in your hand. Somebody's gonna ask you, you have one? Absolutely, I drive a Porsche. Great car, lots of fun, and hey, what the heck? You've got a roof that you can drop for those sunny afternoons. So it is a great buy. The only thing, warning, the Boxsters and Boxster S's of that generation, the earlier models, of course, had the inter intermediate shaft issues and sometimes mixing. So you had some issues with these cars make sure they were taken care of, make sure you've got the upgraded bearing on the intermediate shaft, and you should be good for a lot of fun motoring years for about 10 grand, eight to 10 to $12,000 for a nice Boxster S. So my sixth choice for one of the best, fastest cars available today, cheap cars, happens to go to the 300ZX Twin Turbo. For example, a 90 model or 91 model. Those cars were really, in my opinion, very underrated. They had 300 horsepower. You notice a connection here. V6, a three liter V6 with twin turbos producing over 300 horsepower. Very comparable to the Supras now. And everybody knows that the Toyota Supras of the same generation are going for absolute insane amounts of money, largely because a lot of people like to tune them up. But the 300ZX out of the box has very similar specifications. Rear wheel drive, you can get a manual gearbox. You can get twin turbos producing 300 horsepower. What's not to like about that car with 155 mile per hour top speed and a zero to 60 time of around five and a half seconds. A little heavy, but it still looks sporty. Today, that car hasn't dated a day. It still looks great. It sounds great. Performance upgrades are available. And honestly, it is a great performance bargain. The 1990 300ZX Twin Turbo. So now moving on to my seventh choice. Seventh choice for some of the best value, cheap, fast cars available on the market. Let's try the early BMW 335i. Now, yes, I own one as well, and I seem a little bit biased again, but the reason I bought it was because it's tuning capabilities. And for the sheer value, I've seen cars, 335 cars with some Ks on them, as low as $5,000 that are in decent shape. An average car is eight to $10,000 for a decent clean car. And you could pay up to about 12 to 15 for a really, really nice, clean, super clean, maybe an IS model. So at the end of the day, about 10 grand gets you a really, really sweet car. Now when the 335 came out in 2007, Lots of people tested it against the outgoing BMW E46 M3. And honestly, this brand new 2007 BMW 335 packed with a three liter inline six and twin turbos out of the N54 engine was able to out accelerate the E46 M3 every single time. It is actually a faster car than an E46 M3. Does it handle as well? Not necessarily. M3 was essentially is a track car, but for daily driving or street ability, it is as good as it gets. It's quicker than the M3 in its day. And honestly, the tuning capabilities are astounding. It is nothing for about five grand. You can get that thing well over 500 horsepower. And if you want to spend a few grand more, you can actually get these cars up to that 800, 900 horsepower. There's lots of guys that have done that as well. And because of its forged internals, it takes it like a champ. So the N54 and the early 335 BMW is one of the best bang for your buck and best performance values out there today. So my eighth choice 
of performance bargains or cheap performance cars, cheap fast cars, goes to the Pontiac GTO, also known as the Holden Monero. Now this car was partially built, you know, Australia got involved here. They built this car that fortunately is built on a lot of the GM drivetrains. Now, Pontiac goes back, they have a history of building the GTO and they go back to 1964 and they've built muscle cars with different engines and configurations through the 60s and again through the 70s, different generations. Then a long period of time went by where all of a sudden nothing. But then in 2004, it came back to life. The car manufacturer decided to put this car back into production with the same concepts. Now, of course, the body had a new revised look to a different skin. It looked more modern, but the drivetrain was still very muscular. It was still very powerful based on Corvette drivetrains. Now, this Pontiac GTO came out in 04, but really that had a 5.7 liter V8 engine with 345 horsepower. Really, the model you wanted to get was the 2005 and 2006 model years because they created a whole host of upgrades. Now it had a six liter V8 engine, the LS2 from the LS1, so it actually produced 400 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. With this, it was able to do zero to 60 in about 4.7 seconds and about 13.1 in the quarter mile. Exceptionally fast car. As well, the later models had upgraded side skirts, front fascia upgrades, the interior, the dash graphics were slightly different, and overall, cosmetically, the car was improved quite dramatically. It also had some fancy exhaust tips. Overall, it was a prettier car in 2005 and 6. So those are the models you want to get. Really, you had Corvette power, but not have to live with the impracticality of the typical Corvette. Here you had sort of a back seat. It was a little bit more of a practical car. Now, Unfortunately, the production numbers aren't that high because the car was never all that popular in North America, not like they were in Australia. But nonetheless, you can find these cars very cheap on the market when you do stumble across one. Definitely a recommended buy. So my ninth choice for cheap, fast cars goes to a BMW 540i. Why? Because you can get them dirt cheap, guys. That's the secret. V8 engine, normally aspirated, so it drives instant throttle response. You can get it either auto or a manual. And the beauty is it has 282 horsepower and about 325 pound-feet of torque. Though it's not as fast as the M5, it feels just as punchy with the torque band. It's much more usable for the street and they produce a lot of power. Very fun cars to drive. Very easy to do a smoke show with these cars. They're absolutely awesome machines, chock full of features. You really do feel like you're driving the M5 nine times out of 10, unless you're really winding her out. This car really does have the look, the feel, the sound. With the V8 engine, what's not to like about it? And hey, it's BMW, it's loaded with features galore. Only thing is caution you, timing chains and general maintenance, something you gotta look at. Make sure you take care of all that maintenance or have good service records before you buy one. So my 10th choice goes out to the second generation Audi S8. 2006 to 2010s. This car actually had a V10 engine increased by bore up to 5.2 liter from the Lamborghini Gallardo and actually produced 440 horsepower and it was able to blister, outrun a Porsche 911 Carrera S of the same era. It put down zero to 60 times of about 4.9 seconds, quarter mile of about 13.4, and it could do all of that in luxury and comfort that is known for the Audi brand. What is not to like about a car of this nature and magnitude? Gotta love that. That's the 10th on my list. Thanks a lot, everybody, for sticking around. I definitely appreciate it. So at the end of the day, life's way too short to drive boring cars. And if you agree with that concept as well, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well below and the notifications bell right next to it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share, and I'd love to hear some comments from you guys as well. Do you agree with this list? Maybe you have some other great choices as well. I'd love to hear some choices. I know there's a lot of great cars that didn't make this list. Let me know what you think. Anyway, I hope to see you guys on the next one. Catch you real soon. Bye-bye.